Hello and welcome to Tea Time today with me, Chetty Narula. We're at the country's first Greg Norman style built signature golf course right here at JP Greens in Greater Noida. And of course, I'm very delighted to have a lady on the show today. She is none other than the president of sales and marketing of JP Greens, Vidya Basarkot. Golf has been the theme around which we have built our real estate business. JP Greens has been a pioneer in golfing real estate. In news, Sung Moon Bay wins Brian Nielsen Championship, his 12th career title and first on the PGA Tour. And Graham McDowell beats Tong Chai Jedi to win Volvo World Match Play Championship. Welcome to Tea Time today with me. Hi. I'm indeed delighted to have a woman on the show for a change on Tea Time. Welcome to JP Greens and I'm sure you will see that this is a very exciting place to be in. I always keep coming here for show, to shoot Tea Time in fact. Okay. Now, the country's first Greg Norman style built signature golf course. Tell us more about it. See, we have been on this golf course developing it and showcasing it to the world for the last 12 years. Right. And this has always been lived up to its tagline of another place, another world. I saw that when I was walking in. Right. It's right there at the entrance, in fact. Yes. It has completely lived up to its expectations. And this is not told just by us, but from people all over the world. Uh, there are a lot of top golfers who are coming here to play for championships. There are a lot of uh, weekend golfers who come here. So it has been the tagline which has lived up to its expectation. Not only that, we have not stopped at just developing the golf course. We have also developed the real estate that is around it. So people who come and live here have really appreciated the vision that we have had uh, in developing the whole development. You know, you've spoken about the vision for JP Greens. Now there is a great vision behind this woman as well, who is of course a businesswoman, also a golfer and also heading sales and marketing right here at JP Greens. We're going to discuss a little more about Vidya, but time now for me to tee off first. Good shot there. Thank you, Vidya. So let's talk about you. You're a businesswoman. As we walk over to the fairway, let's discuss about you in much detail. You said your home course happens to be back in Bombay at the US Club. You're a Navy wife. Yeah. Very recently, I moved to Delhi to take up this job in JP Greens. Before that, I used to be in Bombay, and my home club has been US Club. And now that I have moved here, I made it a point to actually practice more golf so that I'm very convincing when I'm selling a golf uh, centric lifestyle. So you know talking about Bombay and there's a lot of elitism attached to golf especially in Bombay because of the lack of real estate and of course the lack of big golf courses where people can go there and just use them as public driving ranges as well. Do you think golf somewhere has become an elitist sport in the minds of Indians today? I think where it started as being elitist is the lack of space. Because there was lack of supply, the demand rose so much that at some point of time, the charges became prohibitive. But nowadays, there is so much of awareness because of a lot of Indians traveling abroad. And even the awareness has started at a school level. So even the golf course owners, are, uh, they are aware that they should make it more affordable so that they can command more customers. That so way. what are you doing it to reach out to the masses as well at See, JP Greens? We have started a training academy for juniors and we have uh, also start, sort of optimized our rates so that our members can come comfortably and play without 
uh, you know, that pinching their wallets. Mm -hmm. So, and many more tournaments are coming up for juniors. So we are trying to spread awareness at the parents level, at the junior school level, and trying to tell them that it's not actually as prohibitive as it sounds. All right, so Vidya, back to our Greg Norman style signature course, right where we are standing at JP Greens. Uh, 72 par. Yes. With 18 lakes, 88 bunkers. Right. What not? How did this come into being? You know, this has been the vision of our founder chairman, uh, Sri Jai Prakash Gaurji. He had bought this land, uh, but it was not in a condition where we could showcase it to the whole world. Right. So we hired the best of the designers then. I mean, this was 12 years back. You can imagine that there was no trend of golf-centric lifestyle. There was, uh, this sport was not so popular in India. Even then, we hired the best Which of the designers. Which was this year that we're talking back? Uh, this is 2001. Okay. 2001, we got a designer. Uh, of course, Greg Norman is a legend by himself. Uh, we got the whole development done according to that design, and we have been maintaining it for the 12 years. Right. So many tournaments, so many championships happen, and everybody is full of appreciation for the golf course. So, Vedya, you know, we're talking about the golf course, which has been the most defining championship that has been played here. Uh, since the last 12 years, we have hosted innumerable championships, but I should say the Avanta Masters that was here. Uh, this year must really take the cake. Absolutely. You know, we have been working very, very hard to make that a success because this tournament came to JP Greens for the first time. Correct. And it was a roaring success. Now, talking about championship first, JP Greens PG2 uh, TI yes. uh, championship is something that you're pegging your hopes on now. Tell us more about it. See, like I said, we not only built the golf course, we actually very actively got ourselves involved in promoting the sport itself. Correct. So what better than to have an event of PGTI as Correct. well as our own golf team. Right. We're also sponsoring a JP Green's team which is participating in the Louis Philippe Cup. Right. So a team and a tournament and a golf course that completes the whole cycle of promoting the game. So Vidya, apart from just JP Greens, you're also involved with the larger periphery of things with the group itself. And now real estate development around golf courses and golfing estates is something that you all are proactively even looking at. Yeah. Tell me a little more about it as to how viable it is to have a golfing estate these days in India. See, I don't have to really speak about how viable it is. You can see the trend that is setting up in the whole country. Every real estate developer worth uh, his name is coming up with a golf-centric lifestyle right. development. So that itself speaks about the viability. But when I speak about the viability, we should not be in a hurry to look at uh, commercial success within a year or two. That will not happen. Obviously. It takes a bit longer than that. But you will have to maintain the facilities. You will have to give worth uh, whatever is value for your money. This is an emerging field. So I think if we see from that perspective, there is nothing to demystify. You right. know, all emerging industries start like this, you know, in a trickle, hmm. and then that becomes a very steady flood. So all we need to have is a bit of a patience and a bit of encouragement for all the stakeholders, and then I'm sure it is going to really take off. Talking about problems and challenges, let's have you play a bunker shot now. Come. <laughs> okay. Come. Lovely. That's a great shot. Thank you. You're very good at golf, I must say. All right, on that note, it's time now for us to take a quick break right here on Tea Time. On the other side, we will remain in conversation with one of the very few ladies who makes her presence on Tea Time, Vidya Basarkod, the president of sales and marketing at JP Greens. Take a quick break. We will see you on the other side. Thank you for staying with us on Tea Time. We're in conversation with Vidya Basarkod of JP Greens. Now, Vidya, you're an avid businesswoman. Yeah. Golf is very incidental to your business. But yes, you're in the business of golf as well. You're a great golfer. How does this game make its way into your business decisions and your everyday life, corporate life that you lead here in Delhi? See, golf has been the theme around which we have built our real estate business. JP Greens has been a pioneer in golfing real estate. The nature of the business is such that every day it throws up new challenges. 
every day it throws up new problems because I have 40,000 customers right. who have bought real estate from us. So every day there is one or the other uh, thing that we need to grapple with, just like in golf. Every shot, every hole that you play in every day is so different from the previous one. So there is a lot of similarity in that the nature of the business and nature of the sport is so much same. So and whenever you are considering a shot, you will have to really strategize. What am I going to hit? How far is it going to go? Is it really taking me nearer to the target? And these are the questions every day I ask myself when I'm dealing with business problems. When did it all begin for you? How old were you when you took on to golf? How did, they, how did you obviously establish yourself to being a golfer that you are today? Uh, see, I come from a defense background. My husband used to be in the Indian Navy. Right. And as you know, the services uh, have many golf courses and the officers and the families get a lot of opportunities to hone this kind of a game and uh, and it's very affordable in the services. So that's how I actually took to the game because my husband is a keen golfer. He was the one who encouraged me and later when I moved to Delhi, I had to sell golf centric uh, real estate. So it became very important for me to learn the game, to improve my game so that I'm convincing enough in my sales pitch. But yeah, when we come to talking about creating world-class golf in this country, now is this the country's emerging growth that is fueling it or is it the fact that our Indian golfers are making their way into international golf tournaments which is fueling it? I think it is both. Both the reasons are fueling the growth of the game uh, to some extent. Not only the economy which is booming and India is being seen as one of the economic superpowers, uh, that is also clubbed with so many of our young golfers coming on to the world scenario, making a name for themselves. The economy, whether it is growing or it is not growing, one of the best indicators is how it is impacting the real estate. Right. Okay. And golf courses be, being a very inherent part of the real estate are also immediately impacted. So if there is a boom, you can see a lot of real estate uh, and golf courses coming up uh, in all parts of the country and uh, if the economy is impacted negatively this is the first sector I think which is uh, going to be impacted. So now that we are seeing so many real estate uh, and golf centric developments coming up it is sure an indication that the economy is, uh, it is going to be strong. Nice one. Thank you. Now, Vidya, talking about executive, part three, pitch and putt courses, you've got Cayman courses as well. They all require very little land compared to a full-blown course like this, 18-hole championship yeah. course like yeah. this. So, by the virtue of them requiring lesser land, would JP Greens like to make a foray into other cities like Bombay where there is a scarcity of land into making smaller courses like that? See, smaller courses also require some land. You know, for example, if we take this championship golf course, right? this is on a land of about 200 acres. Correct. Okay. And if we come to the smaller version, the executive golf courses, they can be fitted in about 125, 150 acres. And there are chip and putt courses, which are just par 3 courses. Absolutely. You know? They can be fitted in about 20, 30 acres. Correct. But for a serious golfer, they don't hold so much fun. Absolutely. You know, you can't really play to your heart's content True. on smaller courses. So how much ever you say we have a golf centric development and then you show them a chip and putt course or a small smaller course that actually takes away the essence of your sales pitch. You know, people think that you are actually giving them a golf course when they come and see that it's just a par three course or a chip and putt course there's a lot of disappointment. So having built such a huge infrastructure and a name for ourselves in having golf-centric developments, we don't really want to dilute it. Dilute it. 
Correct. Because that is a bit of a come down. So for you, it's more about the experience of having a golfing estate a and a very proper... genuine, right. a very honest. Right. There is a purpose of intent, and actually, the customer should get what he sees. Correct. You know, he. We don't want to mislead him into saying it's a golf centric development. but then it is just a par 3 course true i think that is what some of the developers are doing and uh, when the customer actually finds out there's a lot of disappointment mm. and we don't want to get into that business model at all so you're more focusing on golf being a way of life creating that kind yes. of an experience would you agree now now golf is a way of life you tell me from your own personal experience it is a way of life you know especially for me that the luxury when i get up in the morning i have an access to a golf course within walking distance i don't have to really commute or uh, go great distances i live here i play here i work here so this is a great lifestyle and i'm actually promoting as a lifestyle um icon to all my residents you know this is what we can do living here so you spoke about cutting down in commuting but that definitely is not going to happen to you considering your family lives back there right. in bombay we'll discuss a little more on that on the other side of this break take a quick break we will see you on the other side thank you for staying with us on tea time we're in conversation with vidya basarkor of jp greens vidya a lot of corporate social responsibility is something your group is exuding in great style right take us through some of the initiatives see we are very serious about how we contribute not only to the business but the surrounding environment and we can wherever that. yes you can actually see it for yourself wherever we have projects right. wherever we have business interests hmm. we have actually gone far beyond those business interests and try to do our bit to the community you know we have a csr arm under the name jay prakash seva sansthan correct and that is hugely interested in setting up schools colleges universities hospitals temples so it is a great service to the community which we are doing as a part of our business it is not something we really boast of or go out of our way to publicize it comes within the dna of the organization of course now interesting that real estate is such a tough sector to handle and for a woman to survive in that sector and another game which is golf while we are speaking about it is another male dominated game and with you of course you are surviving that as well how does it feel to be one of the very few golfers in the country who who is a woman uh, actually since the beginning of my education and my career i have uh, not been a stranger to being just one lady amongst so many you know <laughs> male colleagues even in my college because i am a civil engineer there were not I, many civil and an iit grad who yes. allowed it yes i did my post graduation in Commendable. iit <laughs> iit bombay and there itself i was just alone in my class of what 72 male colleagues so it has not been very strange for me and not too many women in the real estate sector not yeah. to be women in golf right so no stranger to being the only women amongst a male dominated world no stranger and it doesn't intimidate me because ultimately what you deliver is what is going to count Absolutely. whether you are a woman or a man doesn't count nowadays so much more at all ultimately how you build your team how you deliver your business and how you deliver value to your stakeholders is ultimately going to count and real estate is uh, okay very hardcore uh, male dominated business but then when it comes to customer service when it comes to service to all your stakeholders i think that uh, soft skills of a woman will come to the fore and that is where it is really uh, holding me in good stead and about golf being one of the only few women in this country to be playing golf and the game also has helped me to hone <laughs> those strengths which uh, which are expected in a business whether you are man or woman you are supposed to have those particular skills and the game also helps me to imbibe those skills so it is a win win for both the fields that i am i'm so speaking in. about men and women of course your man who is your husband is back home in bombay and your son lives back home in bombay with him right. your daughter studies in uk and you're the only one living in delhi <laughs> and riding a great corporate wave as well do you miss your family of course i do miss my family because uh, the job is very demanding and if i have to share some of my Uh, feelings at the end of the day it's very important that you should have your family around you uh, yes you love playing golf with your husband yes yes he's also an avid golfer he's isn't he he's a it? very avid golfer and he encourages you he doesn't uh, 
uh, criticize uh, whatever my shot is. So I find that very encouraging and I really enjoy playing with him. Is putting one of your strengths? Uh, I, yes, I should say. The short game is one of my strengths because you can't really beat uh, the men in their uh, tee off shots. Correct. So wherever I find uh, the skills are uh, uh, to a woman's strength, I try to really, really optimize there. So come, let's test waters with your skills. Come. Come. You guys have signed up uh, Gaganjit Bhullar as your brand ambassador at one, what one would assume is a substantial cost. How is that helping your company? Since we are into golfing uh, industry, we are into uh, golf course businesses, the, it is very important for us to have somebody as the focal point of the business. Right. You know, who we can showcase it to the whole world and uh, tell the whole golfing uh, industry and uh, the customers this is how we want to do our business and this is how serious we are about our golf courses. So that he's the best in the country now. He is the best Indian in the Asian circuit as well. Absolutely. So a I great Venetian Open as well. Yeah, it's and a very appropriate choice. has some starts in the European Tour, yeah. making his way into the PGA a couple of years down the line. So that has been a very appropriate choice for us uh, to have Gaganjit. Which is the golfer that influences your game the most in the sense who you look up to? I would again say that uh, it is Gaganjit because he is very down to earth and he is open to telling you about his trade secrets. Oh, he does. Yeah. So he, he is very guileless you know, right. and open. Right. That's what we like uh, very much about him. So I look up to him and uh, the amount of uh, hard work and practice that he puts into his game is unbelievable. Hmm. So I really look up to him though he is much younger to me in age. I look up to him because of his, uh, his uh, values, because of his uh, hard work and the way he has made a name to himself in the, in the game. Now, you know, you encounter golfers on a day-to-day -day basis. Also, you host a lot of championships here. You host a lot of corporate tournaments here. What is your take on women and golf? Because I don't see too many women. I don't even run into too many women in these tournaments who are participating. Actually, Delhi has much more active women golfing community than anywhere That's in true. the country, That's I true. should say. But still, the ratio of women versus men is obviously a business. It is less because it takes a lot of time to practice and keep honing your skills. And even to have a round of golf, you need to have four or five hours away from home. So that may be a slightly hindrance to the women community. But I see a lot of girls taking up to the game nowadays in the junior academy that we run here. A lot of young girls are coming up. And the skill-wise, I think women are also catching up. Because it is not so much as the strength of your body, as much as it is the technique and the mind. Right. You, know, you will have to bear that kind of pressure. You will have to really apply your mind and your technique has to be right. So I don't think it is so much to do with the male strength as much as it is the time that the male members of the community get to <coughs> dedicate to the game. So I see a lot of women and girls coming into the game in the near future. And of course, one of them being you as well. So on that note, thank, thank you. you so much for joining me on Tea Time today, Vidya. Thanks, Jyoti. Indeed, delighted to have you on the show and take this time out and be with us here on the green. On that note, that's a wrap. I will see you next week again. Take care. Goodbye.